I'm pretty excited for tonight's crate because it's a little more self-serving. This time, it's more so for my own personal gig that I got coming up. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. By the way, I'm in the uh, brand new studio. Don't know if you've noticed, but this is... What's up? <laughs> What's up? Got my multicam action going. Working on my OBS. Just sitting here working on the angles just getting it right for you i'm glad you're here if you hop in the chat i will shout you out if you're watching the youtube replay thank you but the whole purpose of this is to dive in and let you all see the inner workings of my crates and how i prepare for upcoming gigs many of us do that but we often do it in silence we sit there and curate and prep but we often go off of our gut which is great and it's gotten us this far but i believe if we all open up the discussion about it and have a chat, then that's gonna make your music just sound so much better. By the way, my name is Aaron Trailer, and I'm here just blocks away from Music City, Broadway, where all the performers tour up and down the row. And I, I figured the closer I get to the music, the better off I'm gonna have with knowing what to play and when to play it. And it's really exciting to share the journey along the way. We've been at it for a little bit over five years now, crate hacking, and it's really evolved into something that we feel has become an ongoing discussion, a, a discussion about music. And that never changes. In fact, it's become more rapid and rabid. I've said earlier that playlists are the new MP3. Playlists are the new MP3 in the sense that it's long form. We're often seeking a theme of a night. We're trying to find a, a way to plan ahead a little easier. And I think to myself that if we proceed with a long form approach, then we're better off succeeding. See, here's the way I see it. Okay, we have four hour gig, right? Four hours. We're gonna play from 10 to two. My approach to that is we have four hours of programming. So we're gonna have to think about a, a hundred songs there, maybe 200 songs, just to lock and load. And I think about a plan B approach where you may have to go strictly off of the requests or off of your gut, which many of us do already, but I, I figure if there's that other one locked and loaded, then we have that just in case. And, and sometimes there's even those nights where they just coast, you know? There's those events where no one's dancing or nothing's about to happen, so you've already got that set prepared, so you, you have a breather. You're, you're thinking, okay, I've already got that set prepared. I can just get through the night. No one's going to mind one way or the other. My point is that tonight I'm going to share with you how I dive into the preparation of a crate. This is going to be a fun one too for me because the story goes like this. Two blocks away from this new pad, we have this milkshake bar. It's a milkshake bar that one of my friends was telling me about and he said, we might have a spot for you. It's totally down your alley. He's a younger guy. He said, I know hip hop really well, but it's that old school that trips me up all the time because well, he's younger and he, we got to educate the uh, young ones, don't we? But my, my point is we had an opportunity here to play old school hip hop and uh, R&B. It's going to be fun to dive into what older songs are still hitting today. Does that make sense to you? I, I guess I'm trying to explain that we got ourselves the opportunity for old school music, but some of that music sometimes is just a little too old school. I don't recognize it. And then there's that pocket of, oh, I know what this guy's doing. He's educating us. And then there's the mainstream old school. You'll see what I'm talking about when I open up tonight's crate, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to build this crate. Let me paint a picture even deeper for you so you can help me along the way. The whole purpose why we're doing this on Twitch and on YouTube is to get the comments pouring in and suggestions. Uh, when I open up to tonight's crate, you're going to see kind of a mess and the collaboration is going to help build that better crate. But to build the better crate, you're going to have to see what I'm getting booked for. Let me share my screen. This is a place called Black Tap. Again, if you could see outside my window, I could almost see it from here. There's a parking lot between me and this place that serves awesome burgers. I get the impression when I walk in the door that they're very New York based. It even says so in, you see it a couple times, downtown New York City vibes in the description alone. And to me, that just means, okay, they, they definitely know their hip hop. There's no doubt about that. I'll go with that approach. But then I also did some recon. And I think every DJ should do some recon before they go and just hop on any stage. They need to go see the venue. They need to go talk to the management. They, they got to go find the pocket that fits good for them. And even if they dream about this venue, they could walk in and suddenly they don't feel the vibe like they were expecting. 
Like they had this expectation of, oh, this place is going to be a banger. But then suddenly, oh, okay, it's it's like that. Or the owner's uh, rubbing you the wrong way. I got a good vibe when I walked in the door. I did some recon. And I took a picture, snuck a photo. Look at this old school stage. It's super fun. Who hasn't played on a stage like this before? First thing I noticed was the graffiti. Definitely New York City. Very tag art. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to a great playlist. They didn't have a DJ on. N- no entertainment on that stage at all in fact at the time but they had a really amazing playlist and in fact here let me show you a little trick here I, I, are you an android user i don't know if you're an, any android users in the house every time i bring it up i seem to get a lot of hate in the comments <laughs> but if you had a google pixel there's a feature called now playing history and here let me show you now playing history it's featured in the pixel brand only and it's very much like a Shazam. It's a lot like a Shazam, but the difference is it's constant. It's in the background at all times. You can opt in. So let's say when you're setting your phone up and you're just like, yes, I will allow now playing history to listen at all times. A little bit creepy, I understand, but if you understand the advantages as a DJ, you could sit this thing in your pocket and put it down and no matter where you go at all times. What was that song I heard in the grocery store two days ago? I can scroll back and see that pretty cool for making a crate too if you're sitting around listening to another dj or another set list and you you listen to it long enough it'll pick it up in sequence and then you can push export to apple music which i thought was pretty cool anyway i had this thing playing in the background of this location here and let me see if i can scroll back and track it down because it was last night when was i When did I have that milkshake and burger? (laughs) Let's see. It was yesterday. I'd say around 8.30. That would explain why I didn't sleep very well. Having a milkshake that late at night is not a good idea. Okay, so I walked in and they were playing Chunky from Bruno Mars, which set the tone. And they went into Travis Porter. Hey, ladies. (laughs) Okay, now, ladies. Yeah. Love it. And then it went to Blondie Rapture. Blondie's Rapture, then Cutting Crew. Uh, It wasn't mixed. but It was just, I think, probably a... Pandora or something. Shaka Khan, Ain't Nobody. It was great. I was there for about 30, 45 minutes and I got a real taste of the place and I may have an opportunity to play there. I may not. It's super convenient, especially with it being right across the street. I figure if I can put together a bulletproof playlist for them, then... So I'm going to make that plan A. Plan B is, of course, go in and read the vibe of the room. And But these are more of the restaurant vibes that we're going for. Restaurant vibes. You, 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 know, you know the type. The... Um, you walk into a place, uh, you're not expected to dance. You sit down, you listen to some great entertainment. STK is a great example of that. The franchise, the steakhouse where they always have a DJ. One of my DJs coined it the dollhouse effect. The dollhouse effect where it's not a dance party necessarily. It's a dollhouse. You're bringing your toys to this uh, arrangement. You're setting up a vibe and so you're DJing in that environment you're not expected to dance which is freeing at the same time i really started to enjoy that early on 2022 when they started bringing the clubs back 2021 lounges dollhouses i feel like you can be a little bit more experimental in places like that you're not to make them dance which is gutting to your ego sometimes when that dance floor just clears when there's no dance floor to begin with hey might as well but it gives you a chance in a room to experiment my thought process is this if i'm going to go and i'm going to build this crate I'm, I'm, i'm about to get into this hold on i'm going to let you see my crate i'm going to be a little bit more background and experimental Let's see where it goes, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to make any promises, but let's go and do what the first thing I would do. Uh, what would I do? Let's see. Without people watching, if I were to be setting up for a gig, I'm trying to put you in the same scenario as me. Let's say that you and I are both getting booked for this gig. We're about to sit down. We got our Mac or our Windows laptop on our lap, and we're going through our hard drive of music. We're trying to find songs that just go with one or the other. So that's what I'm about to do here. First things first, I would, I just want to do some research, right? So there's a few tools that I would use. These tools, let's start with the basics, okay? We often say go to the radio stations, local radio stations, and that, that's fine, but not a lot of old school hip hop radio stations out there that I can think of locally here in town. Jack FM, but that doesn't really do that. So I, I know that for a fact that Sirius XM, Sirius XM Fly, 
If you tune to that, it's channel 50 on your satellite radio. Your source for hip-hop and R&B for the 90s and 2000s. So I think if we start there and take a look and get some ideas, we'll have Mary J. Blige and Outkast, Aaliyah, Jay-Z. Eight minutes ago, it played Wu-Tang Clan. Alicia Keys, again, I'm thinking about a milkshake bar. <laughs> I'm thinking about a burger joint with a New York old school 90s vibes. Maybe Alicia Keys is off the mark. Cream, maybe. My boo, yes. Is this what you do too? Do you just scroll and go yes, no, yes, no, need it, got it, need it? <laughs> yeah, totally. I would go through this. Don't forget to go to the top panel, check out newest. I also like the most heard panel kind of their charts in a way. All right, so we got Poison, Clear My Throat. I think, okay, again, I wanna be more background. I wanna be more dollhouse. To me, DJ Cool yelling while I'm trying to enjoy my meal. That's, yeah, jump. I'm not probably gonna ask people to jump while they're sitting. I'll have to be selective. These are the things I think about, right? Okay, so you got old school radio stations. That's a good source. Here's another one. I like the Playlist Miner. Anybody ever use this one? Playlist Miner, come up with any idea, type it however you want, and it's bound to pop up something, right? So what's gonna happen here is, as you can see, I've used it a lot. I'm gonna go hip hop restaurant. Okay. Somebody at some point made a 90s hip hop restaurant mix. What it's gonna do now is it's gonna, what's the word term I'm looking for? It's going to funnel all the songs together into one playlist for, for starters. Then it's going to help us find out the most played songs from all of these playlists. You follow me? So a very good possibility that Biggie, Juicy could be in one of these playlists, could be in three of these playlists, could be in five of these playlists, rising it closer to the top of the charts. So it's really cool in that regard. So let's go ahead and find the top tracks. I'm actually gonna say Juicy. My, my guess is Juicy, it's somewhere in the top. It's aggregating, that's the term I was looking for. It's aggregating 13,000, 14,000, 15,000 songs from all of the hip hop restaurant playlists. I'm not seeing Biggie anywhere. Weird, how am I seeing Africa? And how am I seeing, okay, Fast Car, I get it, especially now. Africa by Toto, hip hop restaurant. An aggregation of songs that is played in the background on some Spotify playlists. All right, it's finished. Interesting, okay. So here's what it gave us. Fleetwood Mac, Dreams. Jason Mraz, I'm Yours. Okay. I wonder, yeah. Some of these I would not play. <laughs> Miley Cyrus would not be played. Blinding the Lights, maybe. I don't like many of these results. I shouldn't argue that these are the most played songs, but when you're walking into a New York City 90s hip hop, you follow me? It's just, yeah. All right, so I might choose a few of those. To recap, we've done the Sirius XM old school radio station or any old school radio stations. In fact, if you have one in your market, I, I recommend checking that one out. Going to Playlist Miner, another good tool to use. Let's go to the Crate Hackers desktop app. Ooh, that's much easier on the eyes, by the way. <laughs> ah, thank God for dark mode. Now, one of the cheat codes could be just go to the categories and grab an old school 90s crate. Sure, I don't wanna do that in this case because I wanna teach you how I'm personally doing it and how it's made. Charts were a be going if, if i was starting as any other dj again you and i are both going for the same gig we're both going to be lined up for this we're both prepping together you're checking out billboard you're checking out spotify i'm checking out sirius xm i'm checking out playlist minor uh, at some point we're going to go check charts we're going to see what is on top what's number one in a particular genre and i don't know if you've noticed lately but there's a real issue or a, a garden wall with charts we talked about this in a previous discussion on our YouTube channel that there's more of a pay to play now. If you really want to know, you have to subscribe to MediaBase or you have to pay for Billboard and extra data is going to cost you more, which is all well and good, but none of it has been really made for the DJ. Songs have not been considered for a DJ's point of view for a chart. And we're doing our best with the Crate Hackers desktop app. I've gone together and worked with some of the best minds to make charts for DJs. The goal is to create songs that we know will work for a dance floor. And we have an algorithm. We're happy to share it. It's 60-40. 60% popularity meets 60% danceability. 40% energy meets 40% mood. 60-40. That's our algorithm. And I'm going to go into our decades charts here. 
And let's go 90s. This is strictly the 90s. It's not splintered off into pop or hip hop. It's just down the line, the most popular songs in the 90s, according to danceability, energy, metrics like streaming, radio airplay, popularity across the gamut. I'm going to turn off the track matcher. Let's clean it up a little bit. The number one song from the 90s today is Losing My Religion from R.E.M. Now, it does have a score of above 60 and above 40, which puts it there, but it also ranks it at number one because of the amount of plays that it gets. Would I play it at this particular venue? No, no. But would there be places for it in a 90s setting? Absolutely, absolutely. Certain place, certain time, sure, but not at this particular venue. <laughs> so I'm definitely looking at Ice Cube and it was a good day for sure. Dr. Dre, still Dre, absolutely. Spice Girls, wannabe. I go back to the background effect where I'm not trying to get them to dance. I'm trying to get them to bob and, and, and move. Y you've been there before. You're not trying to get them to necessarily, you want, you want them to stay. And you can get away with certain songs for dancing, but you can't get away with certain songs when they're sitting. Does that make sense? Uh, to me, wannabe from Spice Girls is not something I'd want to eat food to. Am I alone? I don't want to be, my milkshake is sweet enough as it is. It's just too sugary. It's just too loud. I'm going to say I'm going to pass on this. So let's pass on that certain vibe throughout this crate. You see what I'm saying? Then we're going to go to just a certain tone, certain energy. And TLC, no scrubs. Yeah, good background music. I want it that way. Good sing-along song. Again, I think weddings. I think 90s parties perhaps, maybe. See, I look at Britney Spears one more time. And I think every DJ has this in their collection if they're doing a 90s party they would instantly think one more time i think we can take more chances when you've got a sit-down audience pull out some of our b-sides what would be those something from the crossroads album <laughs> no i would say circus give me more anything but toxic and one more time it feels to me like we've beaten those songs up a little too much britney's got more than those two songs circus give me more oh man what was that one Oh man, there's so many of them, hard to cap. All-Star Smash Mouth, Hypnotize, it's a little aggressive, but maybe. Definitely some Biggie somewhere in there. I'm thinking more Only You, One More Chance, Big Papa. So this is more of the 90s pop meets hip hop, just the top 100 all together. And I'm seeing some good ones, Mariah Carey, Mark Morrison, there we go. You see where my eye is going? Are you catching, catching what I'm trying to throw down? <laughs> Next place I would go would be 90s Rhythmic. Rhythmic in terms of hip hop, R&B, Rap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is more like it. Maybe a little less gangster. A little bit more R&B. That's the vibe I got when I walked in that room last night. So, boy, there's some good ones here. Juicy at number 13. Boy, I, I was way off. <laughs> I was aiming for number one somewhere. It's 13? Is it? Why? Okay. Am I missing anything? Is this missing anything? Those would be the places I would research and go just to begin. Just to start loosening up the gears and getting the engine running. It's been a minute since I played this. I've been so inundated with new music that sometimes it's nice to have a refresher course. And I love having this opportunity to be able to play at a venue like this. So let's, let's dust some of this off, right? It's interesting to go and see the old music and see what is trending today. For example, I thought some of the songs that were number one back then would be number one today, Juicy, but it's fallen off. It's interesting to go back and see what old is considered hot and the only way to really see is by looking at the analytics uh, seeing the data what is actually being played out there what are people gravitating to the most because if you go to old school if you go too back too far back you start to be vague you start to lose your audience the more niche you get the narrower of the audience you've got when you've only got maybe 20 people in front of you you want to go with the common as much as you can i would think Maybe a little bit more experimental, but my point is you work with some of the information that's readily available. Some of this stuff is free, by the way. You can easily access it. You don't need a garden wall. You don't need to pay for it. It's the internet, but it's a little bit of research. Could just get the juices going. That's my point. All right. At this point, we've got ideas. Now I want to transfer this to my software. i um, not sure what your software is. Serato users speak up. Tell me in the comments, in the chat, let me know. Virtual DJ users. Me, I lean more towards Rekordbox, but it doesn't matter. I just want you to see the playlist, not the structure around it. So let's go back to my page. 
we have a general idea of the songs that I want to aim for. Give me a second to fire up Rekordbox. So resource heavy lately, by the way. Rekordbox is the most resource heavy software that I have on my Mac Studio. I guess it's to be expected. All right, so I labeled my crepe milkshake throwback. I went ahead just for the effort of this video to do the work that I was showing you. All of the Sirius XM playlists, all the playlist miner, all the Cray Hackers crates. I did what I could to narrow it down to the vibe I was going for. So here's milkshake throwback. The font is really large, so just take my word for it. It's only about 111 songs, but I want you to see it. It's in BPM order right now, and I'm still whittling it down. Still haven't decided on all of it yet. I will say that it's nice to be able to go into the 100s because there's so much of it in the 90s. It's even more refreshing to go to the 115s. Look at all these songs in the 115, 118, but that's so hard to find nowadays, isn't it? It, you're hard pressed to find anything in the 110 to 1 range today in 2024. And there's some I'm just seeing as I go through that I may pull out. Bizarre Love Triangle, maybe a little too retro, a little too old. Not very New York. Eh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not from New York. <laughs> I'm just assuming. Don't need two versions of Michael J. Sorry, King of Pop. You don't need two versions. So it's at this point, I want to get some eyes and ears on this. We've all seen a lot of these songs before. It's just what we're trying to paint with the canvas. These are all of the brush strokes we can use. It's a matter of what picture we want to paint. A couple of other things I want to keep in mind is that this is just a restaurant. So I'm assuming even though they do serve alcohol that there will be kids around. So anything with dirty needs to get out of the crate. In fact, with old school music, you probably don't need dirty lyrics anyway. Let's see what I have. I've got to replace Good Life, Rock Your Body. Wait, they swear in that song? When did Justin swear in that song? I don't Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll replace those. Not too many to worry about. So many to choose from. So many great songs, though. Man, it's going to be fun to play this night. <laughs> Taking it back. It's one of the very, right here, one of the very first songs I ever mixed. New Shoes, I Can't Wait. What a classic. It's from here that I want to take it a step further. Before I show you the end result, I want to explain how I make some sense of this madness. A lot of DJs have a tendency to just throw it in BPM order and call it a day. I go one extra step further, and if you don't mind, I'd like to take you through that before I show you the end result. And by the way, I'm gonna give you this crate. Yes, just for sticking through and hanging with me tonight, I'm gonna give you this crate that you can download for any software and any streaming service. Hang tight for that, but first, a little extra credit. I hang back after class to do the harmonic mixing technique. If I'm going to be looking at my columns all night long, I'm going to go ahead and have my key and BPM very close to one another. I think it's important to decide BPM-wise and tempo how to blend. Some may argue that may not even be necessary at certain points, sure, but if you just add an extra layer of key or have it in easy reference, it is an extra credit point to that mix. Not always necessary, but if you can, work with what you got. I'm going to prepare for it with that extra step I was talking about by just looking at the order of first the tempo, but then where it is in the circle of fifths. Now, let me take this and put me over here. If you're, again, I'm really giving Android a lot of love today in tonight's episode, but if you use the app that I'm about to show you called DJ Harmonics, let me show it to you here. Here it is, right here. Take you through a little lesson here. Uh, DJ Harmonics, a free app that you can use for uh, Google Play Store any Android device, and it helps me in a pinch. I've practically memorized it after doing five years of harmonic mixing, but in my head, I'm always gonna be thinking about this as I'm going through that long list of songs. Yes, it's good to have them in slow tempo to fast tempo, I'm columnizing BPM, that's one thing, but if you can also add this to the mix, it takes the guesswork out a little bit more. For me, it really helps you try and determine what songs mix best next. If you could take a look at your screen and say, I know for a fact that these five songs right here blend well together, then it's just an extra step of confidence for you. Not to say it always has to be that way. It could get repetitive if you don't keep your crates uh, refreshed, but you see my point. It's a little extra care. So let's take you through a couple of examples here. We got Usher, you don't have to call in the key of 4A, right next to Wayne Wonder. No letting go, that's a perfect match. Above it, you got Heartbreaker at 3B, 3A. 
Modest Mouse. Another song I may not, I might not even use that one at all. I'll probably just get rid of that altogether. Even though it did show up in the data, I'm still not convinced that song needs to work. I was able to make a harmonic combination with those songs here. From here to here, you're thinking, wait, I know the circle of fifths. I could go 3A or 5A or something within that field. Yeah, you could. You absolutely can. It does sound really good. But I'm not sure everyone's fully well-versed on this other trick you could do. It's a hack that I've been using for so long. But the best way to describe it is with inside this app. If you go to your DJ Harmonics app, or just look at your screen right now. I'm gonna say Wayne Wonder, No Letting Go is 4A. So I'm gonna plug in 4A on the app, right? You see all those clusters of colors that are close to it? Those are all the compatible keys that 4A that would sound good with. If you were to push play on any of the songs in a key around, that's your best bet for a great match. However, see those little outliers? The little ones on the other side over here? I call them across the clock energy boosts. Across the clock in the sense that you're directly across on the opposite side of the clock. You gotta do a plus one, minus one. Plus one, minus one across the clock gets you that energy boost. Let me give you an example of that. 4A, if you're looking at four o'clock on the clock, right? And you go directly across, what is that? 10A, right? 10 p.m., 10 a.m. In this case, it's the key of 10A and the key of 4A. Across the clock, plus one, minus one. Those are your options. So you got 11A or you've got 9A. 9A or 11A are your plus ones or your minus ones. Let's refresh our brains on that and do another test run on that. Let's just start at the very top of the clock. Let's go to 12A, 12A. Let's say it's midnight. See that cluster at the very top? Those are your compatibles for sure. But then the outliers across the clock, plus one, minus one. What would that be? Think about that. Directly across would be six, right? Plus one would be seven, plus one, be seven minus one would be 5a got it 12a is compatible with 7a as well as it is with 5a across the clock and plus one minus one i'm sure there's another more scientific better explained approach to it but that's always how my brain has worked maybe it'll sink in for somebody else i hope there's an aha moment out there for you <laughs> but that was just how i through my dj career i'm thinking about this time i was being taught the map of the nation my teacher had a map of America in front of the classroom, and he said the best way to remember northeast, southwest is uh, go in a clockwise fashion. Never eat soggy Wheaties. North, never east, eat south, <laughs> soggy west Wheaties. Never eat soggy Wheaties. So that's just stuck in my head forever. If I ever look at a map and I need to figure out where the east is, it's eat. <laughs> that's just how my brain has worked. Very similar, in fact, to the approach I have looking at the harmonic wheel. You've got plus one, minus one across the clock. So hopefully that helps somebody out there. <laughs> so we discussed how I want to add that little bit of extra credit to the crate. And it's from there I've whittled it down to, I want to say the best of the best. You ready to see the final result? Here we go. Available for you right now for free at CrateHackers.com. If you click the link right now on either our Twitch or our YouTube, you'll get a seven-day free trial. But you can access this on any platform, Spotify, SoundCloud, BeatSource, Deezer, Tidal, and over 50 other locations, including your favorite record pool. So it starts with one of my all-time favorites. I believe we all need to start with our favorite jam, right? Just to get us in the mood. If you're not given any direction and you want to set the tone, Start off with your favorite song to always get the vibe going. Might as well, right? <laughs> Love me some Janet Jackson. Going into a little vibe with some ja Jagged Edge. Some Shanice. I had to throw some Biggie in there. I don't care what the charts say. Wayne Wonder. We were talking about that earlier. Key of 4A. Mixes perfectly with TLC's Creep. I don't think the dream gets enough credit. Love his voice. I love your girl. Mixes perfectly into Busta with Mariah Carey, I Know What You Want. A little bit of Gangster with some Naughty by Nature, Feel Me Flow, moving into R&B. We talked earlier in a previous video how I like to stagger female voices with male voices. Have you noticed that? So you got male, female, male and female, male, female. So I always try to approach most of my mixes with just a good blend of that along with harmony. So it's an extra bit of credit. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited to play this set. You could take this and push play and know for a fact that this can mix perfectly from beginning to end. I do realize Tory Lane's love is 
It's a little bit newer, but it's got that vibe as much as, again, I walked in and I heard Chunky from Bruno Mars. So it indicates that we're still going for a vibe of new meets old as, as long as it fits the room. Right back into Return of the Mac, some summer love. It's starting to get a little bit warmer here in Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I had to do some juvie. Summertime. Yeah, all right. So you start to get the idea. This is my approach. This is the way I'm going to take it. I hope you're starting to catch on with how this video channel works, the point A to point B process, and how we take a lot of extra care and love and really just, we love hacking. <laughs> we simply love hacking. I'm not going to give it all to you. If you want more, you can get more. Head over to our links on YouTube and Twitch. Get a seven-day free trial. Download that crate today so you can perform at your local milkshake and hamburger bar. <laughs> but I hope you had a good time. I certainly did. Uh, my name is Aaron Trailer. I'm with the Crate Hackers, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please uh, consider subscribing. Yes, get notified whenever we go live again. Thanks again. One's in the chat. Happy hacking. Shout out to DJ Spy. Hey, Spy. Hey, buddy. Shout out to DJ Spy. Hey, Buff. Hey, how are you? Hey, buddy. Hey, Buff. How are you? How are you all doing? Thanks, Buff. Thanks, Buff. Come help with the studio. Uh, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I put a lot of love into it. I put a lot of thought and love into it. It's um, something I would definitely love to help anybody with. If you're ever in Nashville, feel free to just give me a call if you're ever downtown because I'm right in the heart of it. Where are you from, Buff? You from, Buff? By the way, spy at a level two. Congratulations. I'm going to jump off in a second here. I just wanted to record this for the broadcast. Put this on the YouTube channel. All right, y'all. Thanks. Happy hacking. See ya.